Lily's Leaf Farm, also spelled Lily's Leaf and also known simply as Lily's Leaf, is a location in northern Johannesburg, South Africa, which is most noted for its use as a safe house for African National Congress ANC, activists during the apartheid years in the 1960s. In 1963, the South African police raided the farm, arresting more than a dozen ANC leaders and activists, who were then tried and prosecuted during the Rivonia trial. After the end of apartheid, the property was restored and turned into a museum and national heritage site. It was closed to visitors in September 2021, but was scheduled to reopen a year later. The farmhouse is located on George Avenue in Rivonia, once a remote spot in a country village, now a suburb around 20 to 26 kilometers, 12 to 16 miles, north of Johannesburg, in the Santon area. In 1961, the property was purchased by Arthur Goldreich and Harold Walp with funds from the underground South African Communist Party, to use as a safe house for political fugitives. Goldreich lived there with his then-wife Hazel and their two sons, Nicholas and Paul. Being white South Africans in an area reserved for white people, they did not attract attention, and provided cover for black anti-apartheid activists. It was acquired at a time when there was a shift in focus and tactics within the liberation movement, from passive resistance to armed struggle, when Yung Honto We Size We, MK, was established. Lily's Leaf soon became the headquarters of MK. African National Congress leader Nelson Mandela needed a safe place from which to operate, and lived there under the assumed identity as a farm worker called David Mosamai, which was the name of one of his former clients. However he was arrested in Howick in August 1962 on unrelated charges, inciting workers to strike, and departing South Africa without valid travel documents. Others who met in secret at Lily's Leaf included Walter Sisulu, Govan Mbiki, Ahmed Kathrata, Dennis Goldberg, Raymond Maitlaba, Elias Mosorladai, Andrew Mlangini, James Cantor, Ruth First, Joe Slovo, and Lionel Bernstein. MK launched Operation O Mayabai, aka Operation Mayabai, from Lily's Leaf. On July 11, 1963, security police raided the farm and arrested 19 members of the underground, later charging and prosecuting a number of them with sabotage. The police had learned of the location from two sources, George Mellis, who lived nearby in the Rivonia Caravan Park noticed a number of cars going in and out of the farm area and told his family, and a police informant in MK. The activists had been meeting in the thatched room and were surprised by the raid. They had already decided beforehand to move to another safe house, with July 11 being their last meeting at Lily's Leaf. The police found documents during the raid that incriminated Mandela, so he was charged and brought to trial with the others. The trial, which ran from October 1963 to June 1964, ended with Mandela and other prominent leaders, including Sisulu, Govan Mbiki, Kathrata, Goldberg, Maitlaba, Mosorladai, and Mlangini being found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. The Schreider family bought the farm after the raid and turned into a guest house. However, after a reunion of the accused in the Rivonia trial held in 2001, Nicholas Walp, son of Harold Walp and nephew of James Cantor, decided to establish a trust which would own and administer the site and create a museum for future generations. The first phase of its restoration began in 2008. Exhibits were created, and a cafe, along with overnight accommodation, a conference center, and various other buildings were constructed. It was recognized by the South African government, headed by the ANC after they were democratically elected in 1994, as a national asset, of significance to both the history of the ANC and the South African liberation struggle. From around 2008 the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture and its predecessors provided more than R70 million for its maintenance. On November 24, 2014 it was declared a listed as a Grade 1 site. The site was nominated for World Heritage Status, as one of a group called Human Rights, Liberation Struggle and Reconciliation, Nelson Mandela Legacy Sites, in 2015. 
on September 2, 2016 Lily's Leaf was declared a national heritage site in the South African Government Gazette. The site was owned by the Lily's Leaf Trust, and run by Nicholas Walp, founder and CEO of the Trust, until 2021. From around 2008 until its closure in 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture provided more than R70 million for its maintenance. However, the museum closed its doors in September 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, a decision made by the CEO without consulting the board. The department said that Walp had not used R8.1 million of a funding grant given to Lily's Leaf in 2015, and that they would be taking it over. Apparently it was supposed to have been spent on capital expenditure, but Walp spent it on running costs. On March 10, 2022, the board suspended Walp, and the reopening of Lily's Leaf was scheduled to take place in September 2022. Sport, Arts and Culture Minister Nathan Thethwa said that a process had begun towards declaring Lily's Leaf Museum as a cultural institution in accordance with the Cultural Institutions Act. This would enable Parliament to oversee the museum. There was some concern that there was a political motive in using the museum to promote the ANC, but board member Thambawa Kashi said that he would not allow this to happen, as it was a site for all South Africans. The museum houses many significant historical artifacts, including the original copy of the Freedom Charter, Mandela's arrest warrant, and Oliver Tambo's pen gun. The farm is referred to either as Lily's Leaf or Lily's Leaf, with the former spelling used at the site itself. Lily's Leaf is one of South Africa's foremost national heritage sites. Between 1961 and 1963, Lily's Leaf served as the secret headquarters and nerve center of the ANC, SACP, Umkhonto We Size We and the Congress Alliance. On July 11, 1963, the police, acting on a tip-off, raided Lily's Leaf and arrested the core leadership of the underground liberation movement. Following the raid, 10 people were put on trial to face charges of 193 counts of sabotage against the state. Nelson Mandela, who was already serving a prison sentence at the time of the raid, became accused number one. With him in the dock were Walter Sisulu, Dennis Goldberg, Govan Mbiki, Ahmed Kathrata, Lionel Rusty Bernstein, Raymond Maitlaba, James Cantor, Elias Mosorladai, and Andrew Mlangini. Cantor and Bernstein were acquitted but the other eight were found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. The raid on Lily's Leaf and the subsequent imprisonment of the leaders of the struggle dealt a hammer blow to the liberation movement and internal resistance to apartheid. Today, Lily's Leaf is home to extraordinary exhibitions that tell the story of the journey to democracy in South Africa. Lily's Leaf is more than just a national heritage site, it is also a site of memory that keeps the history of our liberation alive. Lily's Leaf Farm in Rivonia was where senior ANC members planned the overthrow of the apartheid government and were arrested during a police raid in 1963. The Lily's Leaf Farm Museum aims to give it its rightful place in South Africa's history. Lily's Leaf Farm was for many years a meeting place and hideout for top African National Congress, ANC, and South African Communist Party, SACP, personnel. Lily's Leaf Farm is widely regarded as the birthplace of Umkhonto We Size We, MK, and was the site of the Lily's Leaf Farm police raid on July 11, 1963 that resulted in the Rivonia treason trials and eventual incarceration of many senior ANC leaders, including Nelson Mandela, who was not arrested in the raid, Govan Mbiki, Ahmed Kathrata, Raymond Maitlaba and Walter Sisulu. Lily's Leaf Farm was for many years a meeting place and hideout for top African National Congress, ANC, and South African Communist Party, SACP, personnel. Lily's Leaf Farm is widely regarded as the birthplace of Umkhonto We Size We, MK, and was the site of the Lily's Leaf Farm police raid on July 11, 1963 that resulted in the Rivonia treason trials and eventual incarceration of many senior ANC leaders, including Nelson Mandela, who was not arrested in the raid, Govan Mbiki, Ahmed Kathrata, Raymond Maitlaba and Walter Sisulu.
The South African Communist Party bought the farm in August 1961 to use as headquarters for their efforts against the apartheid regime. At the same time, the ANC was moving its emphasis away from passive resistance and beginning to focus more on an armed struggle. The Gold Reich family moved into masquerade as the white owners of the property and Nelson Mandela himself lived here while posing as a cook cum gardener under the name of David Mosamayai. Lily's Leaf Farm is the location where prominent leaders of the opposition to South Africa's apartheid government used to attend meetings in order to plan their resistance. Today visitors can visit the farm and learn about the fascinating history. The story of Lily's Leaf Farm is one of incredible strength, power, passion, and struggle. Lily's Leaf Farm is situated in Rivonia off of George Avenue. The farm is the location where prominent resistance leaders such as Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Joe Slovo, and Ahmed Kathrata used to meet, and seek shelter during the apartheid years. Lily's Leaf was an old house that needed work and no one lived there. I moved in under the pretext that I was a house boy or caretaker that would live there until my master took possession. I had taken the alias David Mosamai, the name of one of my former clients. At the farm, I wore the simple blue overalls that were the uniform of the black male servant. An excerpt from Nelson Mandela's book, Long Walk to Freedom. At Lily's Leaf these individuals and others would meet to hold key debates around political strategy, military policy and the steps forward in the political struggle against South Africa's oppressive government. The apartheid laws of 1948 had meant that racial discrimination was officially institutionalist and legal, these laws and others seeped into every aspect of life for non-white South Africans, dictating where they went, where they lived, who they married and which jobs they were allowed to do. From 1948 through the 1950s and into the 1960s the racial discrimination intensified and the treatment of non-white citizens got worse and worse. During this time the government introduced states of emergency at intermittent times. These times meant that police or other government officials were legally allowed to detain or imprison anyone they wanted to without a hearing or a trial for up to six months. Many of the detainees died in prison, some simply disappeared while others were badly beaten and tortured. The prisoners who did receive a trial were sentenced to death, banished, or imprisoned for life. As the situation worsened, more protests were held and the police brutality increased forming a vicious cycle of demonstrations, death, or injury for the protesters and then more demonstrations. In March 1960 the apartheid government declared a state of emergency, arrested over 18,000 people and passing a law that made it illegal for members of the opposition to meet in public. Despite feeling as though the secret location had been identified, a number of the leaders met, for what was supposed to be the final time at Lily's Leaf Farm, on the July 11, 1963 to discuss a plan to overthrow the government which they called, Operation Mayabai. However the final meeting would prove to be one too many and the South African police swooped down on the buildings after they received an anonymous tip off that Walter Sisulu might be in the premises and managed to capture a number of senior leaders including, Govan Mbiki, Walter Sisulu, Raymond Maitlaba, and Ahmed Kathrata. Nelson Mandela was already imprisoned at the time, but he did visit Lily's Leaf Farm regularly. As a result of these and other laws the leaders of the Communist Party decided to find a secure and secluded property where their leadership could meet in secret and the site they chose was Lily's Leaf Farm. The house was purchased by a fronting company and a member of the Communist Party, Arthur Goldrich and his family moved into the front farmhouse to act at the owners while the outbuildings and thatched cottages were used for secret meetings. The move to the farm would result in the birth of the ANC's military wing, Umkhanto we size we. The resulting trial would become famous around the world as the Rivonia Treason Trial which imprisoned many resistance members for over 25 years. The arrest of these leaders was a major blow to the resistance and the struggle for freedom, but the resulting trial forced the world to focus on South Africa and the human rights atrocities that were occurring in the country. Today visitors can explore Lily's Leaf Farm and take guided tour around the different buildings and areas. With the help of state-of-the-art audio and visual displays, passionate guides teach you about the history of the farm and explain the historical and political importance of the events that occurred there.
the house and surrounding buildings have been restored as authentically as possible and over 60% of the buildings now display their original brickwork. Thank you for watching this video.